it's Sal here, a very warm welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to be showing you four new fragrances that I have recently added to my perfume collection. Um, so the first one that I'm going to show you guys is um, Mugler Alien Eau de Toilette. Um, I absolutely love this fragrance. Um, I adore the bottle. I just think it's absolutely stunning. It reminds me of a kind of amethyst sort of stone. So this one is a slightly lighter colour than the original. So the Eau de Parfum is a very, very deep purple, like a, a really dark purple colour. This one's a bit lighter and a bit more translucent, so you can sort of see the juice inside, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, this is a total love for me. Uh, all of these were actually blind buys, so I didn't know how I was going to get on with them. But as it turns out, um, I love this one here. I had actually tried the original Alien Eau de Parfum, which I have a sample of here. Um, so this is my sample of the Eau de Parfum. I gave this one a shot and it's not quite for me at this stage. Uh, maybe one day, but certainly just now I kind of found it a little bit too cloying, a bit too heavy, a bit too warm. Like on my skin it goes very very warm and a bit kind of um, not... it's hard to explain, it's just not quite for me. Um, but this one however is a much kind of airier version of the original. It's got more air in it, it's kind of a bit fresher but it's not like a freshy by any means. Um, it's still recognisably alien, which is what I wanted. Like, I kind of still wanted that alien experience. Like, I really wanted to like this. Um, and I was quite disappointed when I didn't quite love it. But then I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I can just, you know, I can get the Eau de Toilette and I've still got one of the aliens, but it's not quite as intense as the original. So this one to me is just very, very kind of a jasmine, um, lovely, pleasant floral fragrance um, with still that slight edginess to it that the original Alien has. Um, of course it's nowhere near as intense but it's still got that little something that sets this apart from your bog standard regular floral fragrance um, which is what I really like. So this one is still quite unique in my opinion. Uh, this is a very beautiful fragrance. I think it's kind of light and pleasant enough to wear every day. Um, I'll be wearing this to work for sure. I would kind of feel comfortable wearing this pretty much anywhere, um, which I definitely couldn't say for the original Eau de Parfum. That would be one that I would only really want to wear, you know, out on a night out or out for drinks or something like that. That's just my own personal feeling about it. This one, however, I feel is not that offensive like to somebody who maybe you work beside who has like a more sensitive nose or something like that i don't think this would offend them i don't think this would really offend anybody it's kind of just a lighter version but it's still very nice in its own self like it's not i wouldn't say that it's like a watered down version or anything like that it's just it's slightly shifted to a different mood it's a bit of a a more kind of clean sparkly mood i would say whereas the original is a very kind of like deep, like, dark, amber, seductive, like, that kind of really, really flirty mood, if you know what I mean. Whereas this one is just a bit more lighthearted, a bit more um, easy to wear, a bit more casual, I would say. So I could happily spritz this going anywhere, whether that's to the shops, to work, just around the house, or even, even out at night or out somewhere nice. Like, I think it is that versatile, which I'm really, really happy about. I actually really enjoy versatile fragrances. I feel like I can get more use out of them. I feel like um, there's less chance that these would, like, offend somebody as well. So, yeah, quite, quite nice. I absolutely love this one very kind of nice jasmine floral fragrance. I might make this my scent of the day actually, I'm gonna spray some more on. Yeah, so this one is definitely still pretty flirty, it's still very very attractive, it's still dressy even, it's just toned down, it's not the same, like, I mean you know, you know what I mean, like the original Eau de Parfum Alien is, it's something, you know, it's, it's out there, it's in your face, it's quite intense, this one isn't as intense, basically, and it's just a lot more, a bit fresher, a bit cleaner. This has more citrus notes in it, I think. Um, it doesn't have, it's not as heavy on the amber, things like that. And from what I've experienced of it so far, the 
longevity and the strength of the fragrance itself it seems to be pretty good which I'm really happy about um, so that is Mugler Alien Eau de Toilette the next fragrance I picked up was one from Ken Halligan's and that is this beauty here this one is called Equinox Bloom now everything about this fragrance grabbed my attention the bottle the name of the per perfume the notes calling my name i had to have it end of story so this one as you can see here is giving all of a sort of dreamy vintage boutique beautiful vibes to me um i would like to think that this is me in a bottle but i don't know if i'm actually that refined I would like to think that this is me in a bottle anyway, <laughs> but this one is absolutely stunning. It even has a detail on the back here, Penhaligon's London. It says on the back there, absolutely beautiful. That is like probably one of my favorite shades of pink as well in the bow. And at the top, actually, it's as if it's like a crystal ball or something like that. Like, I think that's actually glass. And um, just the quality of the bottle is really beautiful. Um, I like the cap as well, it's very secure, like once it's on there it clicks into place and it's just very secure cap which I really like. Um, and yeah, the name Equinox Bloom, there's something very romantic about that name, it's just very, I, I love the concept of this fragrance, I really do. So the scent itself is very nice, it's kind of um, a floral, sweet, um, green kind of scent in my opinion. I think I read on Fragrantica that it's meant to be kind of like a vanilla type of fragrance but to me it's more... you can maybe get a bit of vanilla in here but to me it's definitely more floral and green and definitely um, there's a feeling of kind of tea in here so this actually takes me to a place where it's maybe a, a lush green kind of garden with lots of different flowers around and there's like dainty little cute tables and chairs where you would sit and have like an afternoon tea party or something like that. Um, it's definitely, it's very very beautiful, it's like a very nice kind of it's kind of fresh, it's green it's it reminds me of being outdoors actually it kind of it almost smells like being in a garden but there's definitely a kind of sweetness running through this i don't know if the sweetness is coming from the vanilla or maybe one of the florals and it definitely reminds me of like some sort of tea whether that's herbal tea like english breakfast tea i'm not sure but it just reminds me of a cup of tea which obviously is my kind of thing so it's really really nice one thing I did notice about this as well, um, I've only had it for a couple of days, but yesterday when I sprayed a bit of this, I, I layered it with my Insulin Eau de Toilette and it added something so beautiful to this fragrance because I found um, once this dries down a little bit, it almost becomes a little bit more citrusy. Um, and then when I layered it with my Insulin Eau de Toilette, the powdery violet gave it like a depth, it added like an extra kind of dimension to this which made it really quite nice. So I think, I think I'm really going to enjoy wearing this fragrance. Um, to me this says um, more spring, summer than autumn and winter to be honest, um, but oh well you know, um, I'll get really good use out of this in the springtime. It reminds me just of like a spring garden with fairies and cups of tea and little dainty little treats or something like that. It's just absolutely wonderful. I'm not quite sure what the longevity and the projection of this one is like as of yet. As I say, I've only had it a couple of days. Um, I've had a few wearings of it, but not like proper wearings. I've not worn it out or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what the longevity is like. The scent itself doesn't smell overly strong. I don't think it'll be like a monstrous performer. I don't think it's gonna last that long, maybe four to five hours, something like that, um, because it does definitely, it's a very softly spoken fragrance. It's not punchy, it's not strong, um, it's, it's kind of a sweet, like shy, kind of dainty, um, yeah, a shy, dainty kind of fragrance, this one here, and I really like it so far. So that's Penhaligon's Equinox Bloom.
The next fragrance I picked up was Zadig and Voltaire, this is her. Now I'd heard a lot of good things about this kind of on YouTube, um, things like that. I was really really intrigued by this um, and when I had a look at the notes it kind of intensified that because um, the notes sort of looked like you know things that I would really enjoy such as your vanilla, your chestnut, your whipped cream, woody notes, that type of thing. Um, so all of those things appealed to me a lot. Now this one is very unusual to me. Um, something I like about this one is the fact that it's very different to any other fragrance that I have in my collection right now. It's, it is woody, um, it, it has got that sandalwood in there as well, so I noticed that there was sandalwood in the notes and I really was quite excited about that as well. There's definitely like a woodiness to this. Um, definitely the whipped cream kind of airy texture, but something which is quite interesting about this one is the fact that it's very, very fresh. So um, fresh in a kind of um, freshly clean sheet sort of way. Um, it does remind me slightly of like shaving cream, that kind of shaving foam sort of feeling about it. And also something that this reminds me of is like, um, maybe partly because of the way the bottle looks as well, it looks a bit like an ice cube, but it reminds me like the freshness of this. It's almost as if you are going on like a snowy expedition, like you are climbing up this big snowy mountain in like a blizzard, that kind of like cold, um, fresh air kind of vibe, which I think this has, particularly when you first spray it. I think once it dries down it kind of mellows out a bit and it becomes a little bit softer, um, but certainly initially I think maybe the pink pepper maybe something to do with that, it's got quite a, a bright fresh fresh air kind of vibe um, and then it, I think it gets a bit creamier, it gets a bit sort of nicer, um, a bit smoother as it dries down but I've got to um, try this one out a little bit more so I've not like had a proper wearing of this one yet. Something which is quite nice about this one actually is the fact that my sister really really likes it. Um, it's kind of funny actually because I think I'm starting to notice a trend here so the fragrances that I am either a little bit like you know, on the fence about or something that I don't totally love. My sister tends to really like them, so I think um, the type of fragrances that I love are like not her thing at all and the things that I don't like she does like, so... <laughs> because I had um, my Byredo Lil Fleur, which was a complete miss for me, unfortunately. I really wasn't a big fan of that one, so I gifted that one to her because she quite liked it. And I was kind of deciding whether or not I liked this one, I wasn't quite sure. Um, and I, I told her that it had like sandalwood and things like that in here and that kind of appealed to her so she tried it and she really likes this one so I think she's going to be um, getting quite good use out of this as well um, which is quite nice. I haven't I haven't quite decided whether I like I, I like it but I haven't quite decided if it's a love for me yet. I, d I don't think it'll be a love. Um, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. It's early days but um, I think it's just because it's so different, it's just so different to what I would usually wear. Um, it's kind of got that freshness that you would almost expect from a men's fragrance, like that type of like, do you know what I mean? Like that freshness um, in a masculine fragrance kind of way. It's definitely very unisex, the smell. Um, and then I think later on, once it dries down, it becomes my more my kind of thing where I get more of the chestnut, more of the maybe a tiny touch of vanilla and definitely the sandalwood. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like disappointed. I do quite like it and I like the packaging as well. It's quite unusual packaging. It does remind me of an ice cube. And the interesting thing about this one, I think, is because it has like an irregular side here and a flat side here. And I think that's because they have like a for her and a for him and they kind of slot together like in this bit apparently. But um, but I think it still looks quite cool on its own as well. Maybe they could have done this sort of thing on both sides to make it a bit more symmetrical, but it's it's unusual anyway and I quite like unusual bottles. So. So yeah, I quite like this one and um, we'll see how I get on with it later on, but as it stands I would give it maybe a 6 out of 10. So that is Zadig and Voltaire, this is her.
And the last fragrance in my fragrance haul today is this beauty here. This is Kenzo Flower Elixir. Now, um, I was this is the one that I was most excited to try because I was fairly confident that I would love this one, and I do. So this one, um, Ollie's mum, the perfume channel Ollie's mum, said that to her this smells like, I think she mentioned that it was almost like an intensified version of, hip, of a Poison Girl. Um, like she told me that, I think I asked her about it and that's what she said to me, it's like almost like an intensified version of Poison Girl. Um, and I already love, I mean you guys already know, I love Dior Poison Girl Eau de Parfum, it's one of my favourite fragrances. So when she told me that I was kind of like, well, what am I waiting for? <laughs> I totally see where she's coming from with that actually, it is like almost a, as if you've got your um, Dior Poison Girl and you've somehow um, extracted the essence version of that, like a really kind of intense version of that and like taken that out, like almost distilled it further or like filtered it out even more to get like an even more enriched version of it sort of. I definitely get that feeling from it. It's really really nice, it's kind of a deep mysterious dark kind of gourmand fragrance and I absolutely am loving it. It's a bit powdery as well. I would say this actually smells kind of more powdery than Poison Girl, um, richer than Poison Girl. It's, it's kind of, it's got, there are similarities but this is kind of, it's different. It's like different in a good way. It's uh, richer, deeper, darker, more mysterious. Um, more of like a nighttime kind of date night scent than Poison Girl, if you can imagine that. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, and I'm so happy because I was a little bit unsure as to whether or not I'd like this because of like the raspberry notes. And um, like raspberry can be a little bit hit, hit or miss with me. But actually the raspberry, I think it just, it's just quite a well blended scent. You don't really notice the raspberry on its own. Like I think it's definitely there, like in the top note, it gives it like a, It gives it a structure and it gives it kind of an accent, like it adds something to it, but it's not totally like noticeably raspberry, if you know what I mean. Um, from what I can remember, the other notes in this are like praline, um, maybe tonka bean, vanilla, really rich kind of gourmand notes in this. And it's absolutely, it's absolutely stunning. It is definitely an elixir, like when I think of an elixir I think of like a really really concentrated, rich, thick, syrupy kind of dense fragrance and that's what this is. This is like sweet, oh my goodness it smells amazing, it's so flirty, it's so beautiful, um, it's kind of like it reminds me of a femme fatale, like an irresistible woman, honestly. This would make you feel like totally irresistible, <laughs> it's, that, it's that nice. Um, I wore it kind of yesterday evening as well and from my experience uh, it seems to last quite well but um, I need to try it out more and um, sort of see more of that like I'm not 100% sure exactly how long this lasted on me but it seems to last pretty well so far um, so yeah I absolutely love this fragrance so far it's absolutely stunning I would rate this one probably 9 or 10 out of 10 to be honest it's absolutely beautiful <sighs> Thick, powdery, rich, deep, dark and mysterious. This one here, so beautiful. It's almost like it gives me La Nuit Tresor vibes but like powdery, if you know what I mean. Like it doesn't smell exactly like La Nuit Tresor but that's sort of the mood that La Nuit Tresor Eau de Parfum gives off is reminiscent of the same mood of um, this one here. So this is a total wood for me, I adore this one. So that's Kenzo Flower Elixir. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these fragrances. Um, also let me know if you would like me to do sort of uh, an in-depth comparison review between Alien Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. If you would want me to give like a more detailed um, video on that, let me know. Uh, also let me know what your scent of the day is. And thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Um, I will see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.